If there is one anime airing this season that has been nothing short of a pleasant surprise and a wonderful experience, it's been Bochi the Rock. Released by Studio Cloverworks and directed by Saito Keiichiro, the show, which has had nine total episodes at the time of this recording, primarily concerns itself with the socially anxious Bochi and how she learned to play the guitar to make more friends and become more popular, later getting roped into a band with three other girls. In a nutshell, perhaps the show's greatest strength, however, is not in its visuals, which are incredibly varied with both animation and real-life footage, nor in its music, which is not only well-written, but also well-mixed and recorded. Rather, it's that it takes a look at social anxiety and treats it both as a comedic vehicle for gags and a completely human trait within Bochi. The way the show engages with Bochi does indeed make many of her thoughts and actions exaggerations for punchlines, but the underlying apprehensions that color the comedy are in and of themselves perfectly understandable and relatable. The fear of performing poorly and having everyone watching you, having your band members replace you, needing to sell tickets for a gig, and the like, are all thoughts that most people who have been in or teach the arts, especially music, inherently wrestle with on a consistent basis. Bochi the Rock has succeeded in making me look forward to Saturdays even more so than I already did, as each episode walks the twilight zone between comedy and drama without falling too much towards one side. But if there is one particular sticking point that has made talking about Bochi the Rock online more of a head-scratcher than it has to be, it's that there is one show that inevitably comes up as a point of comparison, Yamada Naoko and Kyoto Animation's k -On. Now, before you head to the comments section and note that I've already made a video about me coming around to k brand of cute girls doing cute things some time ago, I want to clarify something up front. This is not an update video on that. I still adore k and that doesn't plan on changing anytime soon. However, the fact that k has been lumped into discussion with Bochi the Rock, especially in conversations in which it is insisted that one show is inherently better than the other one, has been something that has aggravated me to the point where I think it's worth commenting on. As such, this video is going to take a look at the reasons why some part of the anime community feels so compelled to talk about Bochi the Rock by throwing in k for comparison, and ultimately, why these comparisons, generally speaking, tend to do such a poor job of contributing to the media discourse or casual discussion for both of these shows. But first, a quick little bit of context. I've gotten some DMs from people who have noticed or remarked that, whether I was making a straight-up review or a thematic analysis video, that I do not have another show or property that I bring into the mix. This is deliberate. Most of the time, I tend to talk about a piece of media entirely on its own terms, divorced from other specific properties or things of that nature. Any piece of media you consume already has an uphill battle to climb because your aesthetic tastes have been born and molded from everything that you had seen or experienced prior to it. Another way to look at it is that the more media you see, the less likely you are to be impressed. Having a singular show that you hold up as a gold standard or a plateau that needs to be aspired to risks placing additional expectations on something when it's not warranted. Despite the stance I have, I do want to stress that comparing media to other media is not completely unwarranted or anything of the sort. When it comes to shows that are dealing with similar themes or essential topics, comparisons may be entirely welcome. But this is dependent on something important. The actual affective goal of the narrative needs to align between the two pieces of media. Or to rephrase it, they both need to try to be doing the same thing. And this is the main way in which Bochi the Rock and Kaon do not align. Viewed in the most abstract way possible, both shows fall within the music genre and the cute girls doing cute things label. These classifications carry certain expectations, namely, they involve the idea that the main cast, if not the whole cast, will feature girls in high school or younger engaging in lighthearted musical affairs. The intent is warmth rather than something more akin to heavier melodrama or societal commentary that one would see in the likes of Denpa, for example. But once we move beyond that first abstract layer and into the show proper, it becomes more plainly obvious that the two franchises' particulars differ. 
There are still similarities to be sure. For instance, there are four total band members, though Kaon gets Azusa later as a fifth, one of whom is most notably shyer or more reserved than the others for some reason, and the musical style most often employed for the in-show performances is rock and roll. Some incidental plots about doing something pertaining to practice or ways to improve the band are also addressed. However, the reality is that, while Bochi the Rock and Kaon are both similar in terms of their genre and some aspects do align between them, how the shows use the genre labels differs wildly. Both aim for two entirely different affects despite the window dressing they both share. While this might sound rather aggrandizing or posturing, I do think this remark is worth making. Genre is, frankly, among the laziest ways to talk comparatively about media because genre more than anything is merely a signpost. It is not an examination of the show's inner machinations, structures, and how they function with each other, and genre as a concept is too vague or unspecific to make connections stable. To put it another way, it's like saying Tsurune should be compared to Ping Pong the Animation because they're both sports genre anime, yet nearly everything about these two shows, even down to their visual styles, aims to produce two entirely different kinds of messages or emotional affects. Even if one wants to say that they're both about exploring the inner psychology of the characters playing the sport, the actual destination or end goal of that exploration is too dissimilar to compare fairly. A realization like that requires distancing oneself from the idea of liking one show more than the other, and more about trying to evaluate the whole. And that's also not getting into the fact that ping pong and kudo archery are two entirely different sports with different requirements of mental and physical concentration. So how do Bochi the Rock and Kaon differ precisely? To begin with, Bochi the Rock is more inherently chaotic in terms of its presentation. Bochi the Rock is a lot more willing to take visual aesthetic risks, even if it means adopting an approach with different kinds of animation or using real-life footage and mixed media in order to make a point, be it funny or otherwise. When was the last time you saw claymation in an anime? The impact of such an idea is that it creates a sense of unpredictability, that the series could at any given moment adopt any style it chooses seemingly at random. The randomness itself becomes a feature of the viewing experience. That chaotic quality likewise translates to its story. Despite the anime being part of the cute girls doing cute things label, it doesn't tend to utilize the familiar settings or plot elements. Classrooms and other associated locations are largely abandoned in favor of dark and narrow closets, a rock and roll club with a stage for performing rather than a repurposed culture festival auditorium, and similar. Bochi's paralysis and the oddball dynamicism of the group makes Kesoku Band feel less like a traditional school club and more like an incongruous hodgepodge of people. The show's dramatic trajectory is thus framed around Bochi not only getting into the band, but also becoming more familiar with her bandmates and how various situations allow her to break out of the shell she's constructed for herself. These situations are all perfectly mundane for bands that are just getting started, especially considering that the show does not rely on the old trope of meeting in the club room to practice or hang out. In fact, they cannot physically do that because in a nice little variation of the familiar formula, the band members are spread between two different schools. Nijika and Ryo go to a different school closer to where they live, while Bochi and Kita go to the, for lack of a better word, main school that the series takes place in during the school-oriented episodes or moments. Kaon is more visually consistent, instead relying on beautiful fluidity and poise, and at times giving the most painstaking efforts to make the most mundane things crackle with life. While it may not be as visually adventurous as Bochi the Rock in terms of whatever style it might go for at any given moment, Kaon's approach lends itself well to coziness and familiarity rather than chaos, like putting on your favorite winter coat or watching pure white fluffy clouds. Perhaps it could be thought of this way. Kaon uses the familiar settings and visual cues of cute girls doing cute things to maturate and maximize the most archetypical understanding of the genre. I don't want to make that sound like a knock against the show, because it's definitely not meant to be one. If anything, it's a positive testament to its aesthetic and the fact that it pulled it off so effectively. 
seriously, how did Yamada Naoko direct this when she was in her early 20s? Now, from here, I could march through every single episode of Bochi the Rock and talk about how each one manages to differ from Kaon in painstaking detail, or talk about how Kaon is unafraid to leave music contexts behind altogether if it means allowing the group to have fun and build their dynamic for comedy or fuzziness. But going through both shows at a snail's pace is honestly something that I both do not have time for, and I really don't think that I should. I don't plan on keeping you here for too long, and this is already the longest video I've made for this channel. As such, I'm going to hold off on talking about most things plot-wise except for one, namely the main musical performance. Both Season 1 of Kaon and Bochi the Rock feature either the Light Music Club or Kesoku Band having a performance as a test of the band coming together musically. For any music anime, this type of moment more or less is the first climax, and ends with either the group's success or realizing that they aren't good enough. Fuafua time is this moment for the Light Music Club, taking place during the school festival in episode 6. The main obstacle that the group has to overcome is that Yui's voice has given out and that Mio has to sing in her place. Mio eventually musters up the courage and is able to sing, all the while Yui provides backing vocals with her groveled voice performance by Seiyu Tokoyasuaki. The impact is not only dramaturgically satisfying because the group finally performed together, won over the crowd, and Mio overcame her nerves, but also has the underlying comedic satisfaction of the performance featuring deliberately bad singing. It therefore works in a twofold manner, which sets the stage proper for all the senses of fun that the future Light Music Club performances will have moving forward. The contrast between Guitar, Loneliness, and the Blue Planet from Bochi the Rock and Fuafua Time is plain, however. Bochi the Rock eschews all comedy in favor of treating the moment as pure dramatic catharsis instead. The stakes are inherently a lot higher than just giving a performance. It serves as Kesoku Band's attempt to have their worthiness as a band be acknowledged and be given permission to perform at Starry Club. More than that, though, is that it's the first true moment of the story where Bochi acknowledges that even if she doesn't know whether she's grown or not, she's going to buckle down in this moment when everyone needs her, and that she will give it everything she has. The fact that the band passes, along with the Starry Club owner, Nijika's older sister Seika, acknowledging Bochi's talent, is a sign to the audience that Bochi's growth has already begun, even if Bochi herself does not realize this yet. Guitar, Loneliness, and the Blue Planet is therefore not just a performance or piece of music that fills some necessary quota for music anime. Wrapped up in this collective goal that the four girls feel is Bochi's own self-signification beginning to germinate. The point is not that she is performing the piece, but rather she is performing the piece with the reassurances from the other band members that they are in the thick of it together, with Ryo telling her in a previous outing that her lyrics are good, and that the radiant Kita singing such dourness might make the performance more amusing on a meta level for the band. Both anime brilliantly use a rock band performance for entirely different dramatic or comedic ends, showing that each has mastered either comedy or drama for the purposes of what the tone and narrative demands of them. I said I would not talk about the plot any further, but there is one point of comparison that I really want to dive into though, mostly because it has tended to dominate a lot of conversations I have been privy to. Due to Bochi's penchant for social anxiety, the Kaon character she gets put up against more than anyone else is Mio. On the immediate surface, this makes sense. Both characters have nervousness as a central aspect of their character, and some of the more memorable moments in both shows involve them overcoming that nervousness either out of personal conviction or as a necessity. The comparisons start to break down, however, when we take a closer look at the history of the two characters biographically. Mio's main friend is Ritsu, who was able to give Mio a piece of advice that helped Mio recite an essay in front of her class, which kickstarted their friendship and helped allow Mio to gradually become a less nervous person. The catch is that this instance of friendship blossoming between the two girls happened in fourth grade when they were both about ten. By the time Kaon starts, both characters have entered their first year of high school, which is roughly five years later. As such, Mio's shyness is an aspect of her character that she was able to gradually begin to grow out of through years of friendship. Not to mention that, even in the midst of their high school years, whether as a first year or as a senpai who ends up getting her own adoring fan club later, 
Miel's characteristic shyness never completely goes away. It arises even in moments that may not make the most logical sense, but work dramaturgically for the purposes of maintaining a tone or setting up a joke with eventual punchlines. Regardless of the purpose, though, if Miel's character is any indication, it's that nervousness or anxiety is not a thing that people can just get over. It's an aspect of your personality or manner of being that has the potential to stay with you even after you've undergone some personal evolution. Especially given that, Bochi's form of nervousness is all the more understandable. Bochi spent the better part of her life sequestered away in her room practicing guitar by herself. Her personality was defined less by actual social interaction and more through an internet presence through her video uploads and YouTube channel under the Guitar Hero moniker. Because she was never able to muster the inner gumption to break out of her social shell and interact with other people more regularly, it led to a self-propagating cycle of not taking initiative, which led to her spending more time alone in her room and making online content despite her desire to be in a band. It is worth remembering that the only reason she even joined Kesoku Band in the first place is because Nijika roped her into it since they needed an emergency guitarist and Bochi was too paralyzed to refuse. This does on some level parallel Mio joining the Light Music Club, except that the key takeaway is that Nijika was a total stranger while Ritsu and Mio's friendship goes back several years, even if some details are exaggerated by Ritsu. Bochi was thrown into the lion's den more quickly since they had to perform that very same day. I find it interesting that Mio's shyness is something that can be chalked up to a character trait that's more acceptable despite her having more time to be weaned off of it through her friendship with Ritsu than it is for people to accept that Bochi's anxious tendencies went unfixed all the way through to the present and have only just begun to lose their edge because she has only just started being more social and sociable. The amount of time that Bochi has been in Kesoku Band is nowhere close to the same amount of time that Mio has known Ritsu. The same barometer cannot be used to evaluate these two characters because aspects of personality, personal history, circumstance, and even their actual physical proximity in relation to other band members all differ. The thematic through-line that evaluates Bochi and Mio as being one better than the other only works if you look at them purely in the abstract without delving into the particulars. I imagine that part of the adverse reaction to Bochi's anxiety not being as acceptable while Mio's form of social nervousness is might be due to their framing. Bochi the Rock takes Bochi's anxiety and uses it both as a dramatic vehicle for Bochi's development and for the purposes of gags. The latter can be read as heartless or unnecessarily mean-spirited if handled poorly. Anxiety is indeed a real problem for some people that, even now, we sometimes don't do the best job of properly navigating as either a conceptual issue or something being experienced in real time. But in a moment of similarity, much like with Mio in Kaon, Bochi the Rock never read to me as being that way. The intended path for every event that has taken place throughout the series has always been to allow Bochi's world to gradually get bigger and more confident, even if her social tendencies or way of seeing doesn't get remedied right away. The jokes actually lead into this theme well, and the episodes demonstrate that the band is more familiar with how Bochi tends to behave and ways that they try to address that, even when pointing out that she's doing something unusual. The comedy is only mean-spirited on the surface. The characters do not keep Bochi around to laugh at her, but because they recognize that she's the person who holds the band together in her own bizarre way. Like Nijika insinuates in the conversation outside the restaurant in episode 8, Bochi is a real hero in their eyes. There is one other reason why I imagine some people might be eager to play the which one is better game between Kaon and Bochi the Rock, and that is rooted in Kaon's longevity and its reputation. The first season of Kaon came out in 2009, and the anime adaptation wrapped in 2011 with the release of the Kaon movie. 
Considering what the show effectively did for the cute girls doing cute things label, the moe aesthetic, and the slice of life genre as a whole, it has had a lot of time both when it first released and in the ensuing unfolding of anime's history, such that it has been bestowed a holy place among many anime fans. I can think of several people I know who do not like cute girls doing cute things or music anime, but are charmed by k in a way that they don't normally feel when watching shows under that genre or label. But I think the unintended consequence of this reputation is that it has made k act as a benchmark for situations where it really does not call for it to be so. What it does do, however, is make for a convenient point of orientation that others can easily latch onto because of its popularity, which then dictates the ensuing conversation. The catch is that the road between Bochi the Rock is similar to Kaon and Bochi the Rock is worse than Kaon is shorter than some may realize. And keep in mind, I have not even talked about the fact that Bochi the Rock is more of a single character study, with the others getting development and dynamics sprinkled in, while Kaon is more of an ensemble show. The fact that Kaon doesn't have any characters like Bochi the Rock's Ryo, the fact that the lyrical content of the songs themselves are not alike despite the music's genre being rock and roll, and so on and so forth. The more time you spend putting Bochi the Rock and Kaon side by side, the more you realize just how dissimilar they are and how the X show did it better exercise really doesn't hold any water. I want to be incredibly clear about something, by the way. This is not me arguing that Bochi the Rock is inherently better than Kaon or that Kaon is inherently better than Bochi the Rock. Naturally, it is perfectly fine to have a preference to one versus the other. There is nothing that says you have to like something, nor that you have to find the narrative journey compelling or even condone the central tenet of what a show is arguing. However, one's preferred form of storytelling is, at times, the real underlying motive behind flimsy or unneeded comparisons between media. If a comparison is to be made between Bochi the Rock and any other anime or manga, it would have to be something that more directly deals with social anxiety, or, to be perhaps more precise, something that more directly deals with social anxiety in music contexts when it's aiming to be both comedic and dramatic as the need arises. And even then, tread carefully. I suppose there is one other takeaway to this video. Rather than debate about whether Bochi the Rock is better or worse than Kaon, take the third option. Watch them both, and love them both. That way, you always win. This has been Zenote of Zenote Taku. Happy viewing, everyone.